Hello everybody, this is T2 Tutorials, and today I have for you a couple randomizer circuits that work in the 1.16 versions of Minecraft. Now, these designs are based on concepts that have existed for a while, but they are either broken in this update or can be made faster thanks to new redstone mechanics. Both of the randomizers featured in this video have a couple variations depending on how you want to use them, so let's take a look at all of those. The first design is a simple dropper item randomizer with two outputs that I'll be showcasing in just a second. And this one comes in a 2 tall by 3 wide version, and a 4 tall by 1 wide version. The second design is a more complex shulker box powered randomizer, which can support anywhere between 2 and 9 outputs, and can also be modified so that it can't give the same output twice in a row. So both of these randomizers, despite looking drastically different, take advantage of the same core mechanic that dispensers and droppers will fire an item from a random slot of their inventory each time they're powered. And if we can decode which of these items has been dispensed, we can translate each individual item to an individual output of the randomizer. How do we do that? Well, with this first design, it's by measuring the signal strength of each item that gets dispensed up into this hopper. So in this dispenser down here, we have a netherite ingot, which is a stackable item, and a non-stackable item, which is the netherite chestplate. And the reason this makes a difference is that the netherite chestplate fills up an entire slot by itself, whereas you need 64 netherite ingots to occupy that same amount of space in the dropper. So the chestplate is considered to take up more space in the ingot, and as a result, it gives a stronger output through a comparator. So as you can see, when the stackable netherite ingot is dispensed, it yields a signal strength of 1, which is only enough to power this target block, activating this comparator and then the lamp. When the non-stackable netherite chestplate is dispensed, it yields a signal strength of 3 this time, which is enough to power the second target block. This activates this repeater and the second lamp, but it also extends this middle sticky piston, which pushes the first target block out of the way, disabling that output so we only get one output at a time. The main benefit of this design is that unlike the old one, both outputs have the same amount of delay. So with the old design, this two tick repeater gives the right output one additional tick of delay when compared to the left one. But here, the redstone reaches both target blocks at the same time, so both outputs have the same amount of delay. This design is simple enough that I don't think I need to do a tutorial for it. You should be able to see everything you need right here. Just once again, this is a dropper, not a dispenser, with a non-stackable item, which is a piece of armor, tool, or weapon, and a stackable item, which is basically anything other than what I just mentioned. This here is a sticky piston, and this block is a slab or another transparent block, and that way the dropper can't get powered twice if it receives a short input. And then finally, this here has to be a comparator, and that is because it updates later than the repeater, which ensures that this target block can get pushed out of the way before this lamp can get powered in the event that we get the non-stackable item dispensed here. Something to keep in mind is that because the comparator will be measuring a very low signal strength from the dropper, if the circuit you're connecting to this output is more than a couple blocks away, you'll need to add another repeater after it, which will add back that one tick of delay. Here's the one wide version, and this works exactly the same as the last design. If we get the stackable item, that will travel down the bottom path, which will go through and power the slamp as normal. And if we get the non-stackable item, that will go up here and get the top lamp, but also extend this piston down, disabling the bottom output. So if you want to build this one, feel free to get your screenshots now. Oh, and one more thing, this design is not tileable, unfortunately, so if you want to have more than one, you'll need a one block space in between each of them. So let's move on to the larger randomizer now. So this one still gives different outputs based on different signal strengths, except this time it's more complicated because we have more outputs to worry about. So we can no longer rely on stackable versus non-stackable items, because that would only give us two states to work with. The way we get that additional level of control is by using shulker boxes. So in this dispenser here, there's a number of shulker boxes, each with different amount of items inside. So each time the randomizer is activated, a shulker gets dispensed in front of this comparator, which yields a certain signal strength depending on the fullness of that shulker box. And that runs into our decoder. And because we have a more complicated dispensing circuit, we also have a more complicated decoder. So this here is a circuit known as a red coder. This particular design was designed by Mumbo Jumbo, and I'd be very surprised if you don't know who he is considering you're watching the Redstone tutorial right now. But anyways, I'm not going to go into too much detail 
about how the red coder works, but essentially it gives an individual output for each possible signal strength of this redstone dust here. So at the same time the signal strength is decoded, this redstone dust also runs into this target block, which powers this piston and breaks the shulker that gets dispensed. And then the shulker gets picked up by this hopper and runs into this bottom dropper. And now you might be thinking, this is not a perfect randomizer because the shulkers in the bottom can't be dispensed on the next cycle. And that's actually not true. Because of how droppers and dispensers work in Minecraft, a shulker box from the bottom here can actually be dispensed upwards into this one and out into the open in the same pulse. So there are equal odds for all the shulker boxes in both the dropper and the dispenser. But sometimes you might not actually want the same output to happen twice in a row. And if that's the case, you should use this design because this one ensures that as soon as a shulker box is broken, it's unable to be dispensed again on the next cycle. So to build this randomizer, you're going to need one dispenser, one dropper, one hopper, one piston, one chest, two target blocks, three comparators, two redstone torches, three redstone dust, and six building blocks, and that's just for the dispenser circuit and the first kind of weird output. And then for each additional output you want to add, you'll need one target block, one repeater, two redstone torches, two redstone dust, and three building blocks for each of those additional inputs. And then if you want to build the design that can't give the same output twice in a row, you'll need an additional dropper and hopper for that. And of course, you'll need a number of shulker boxes corresponding to the amount of outputs you want to have. Find yourself a 3 by at least 5 by 3 area to work with, and that second dimension obviously depends on the amount of outputs you want to have. So we're going to start by placing a dropper on the middle front space here running upwards into a dispenser facing back this way with a hopper running back into the bottom dropper. Then you want to place a block next to the hopper with a comparator coming out in this direction running into a block with redstone dust on top and then place a target block on top of the comparator to redirect that signal and place a piston facing downwards that will break the shulker box. So for this first output, it's a bit of a weird one, but you'll want to place a sort of Y shape of blocks starting right here. So that's a normal block, and then a target block, and then another normal block, sort of forming a diagonal line here, and then another block with one box space above the first one like this. That's sort of a Y shape if you look at it from this direction, in a way, I guess. Um, and then you'll want to place a piece of redstone dust on this block here. That should be redirected by the target block a redstone torch on the side of the target block, and a redstone comparator on top of the target block running into this block here. You can place your second redstone torch on top of that block, and another piece of redstone dust on top of this one. Then you'll need to place another block next to the target block with another comparator running into the side of the first one. Then place this first comparator into subtract mode by right clicking it, and you should see this little torch comes on. And then you want to place a chest um, behind the second comparator here with any random item inside there. And the reason you have to do this in such a convoluted way is due to the changes uh, to redstone in the 1.16 update. And so this comparator here basically ensures that uh, this comparator doesn't get powered prematurely, which would stop the first output from working at all. Now for the remaining outputs, it's much simpler than the first one. It'll actually just be the same exact shape of blocks here with the target block in the middle. And actually everything is exactly the same as this slice of blocks here, except that the comparator is a repeater instead this time. So that'll be a repeater here, uh, dust down here, redstone torch on the side, redstone torch on top, and another piece of dust right here. I'll do one more just for demonstration purposes. So that'll be three blocks like this, target block in the middle, redstone dust here on the bottom, torch on the side, torch on the top, repeater running into here, and then another piece of redstone dust on top of this block. You can continue this same pattern on for a maximum of nine outputs, and it's exactly the same as what I just showed you here. Finally, I'm gonna show you guys how to fill up your shulker boxes, and you basically just need to make sure that each shulker box yields a different signal strength. And I think the easiest way to do this is to use a cheap non-stackable item like a shovel. And yes, admittedly, the shulker box is an endgame item, so you're probably not worried about the cost of items. But anyways, so the first one, you'll need to place in one item that will yield a signal strength of one. Uh, the second one, two non-stackable items. 
the third four. And we're only using three outputs for the randomizer using the tutorial, so this is good for us. But if you wanted to carry on with more outputs, the next shulker box would need six shovels, and then eight, 10, 12, 14. And if you wanted all nine outputs, the final shulker box would need 16 non-stackable items in it. And to modify to have non-repeating outputs, all you need to do is replace this dropper with one facing in this direction with another dropper facing upwards and a hopper running into the top dispenser like that. Here are some quick tech specs on these randomizers before we go. So the fastest each of these designs can be activated is every six redstone ticks or 12 game ticks, which is about this fast. And just a note, if you wanted that kind of speed with the simpler design, you would need to power this block or a block adjacent to the dropper, not the dropper itself. Finally, you'll notice that the shulker box randomizer gives one tick outputs. As you can see, the pistons are shooting out their blocks. And this may be useful to you depending on what you're trying to use the randomizer for, but it also might not. You can get around this by adding two tick repeaters to each of your outputs. As you can see, no more one tick pulses. Alright everybody, that concludes today's tutorial. I hope at least some of you found it useful. As always, leave your suggestions or ideas for future videos down in the comments section. And like the video if you did. I'm going to be releasing a huge project soon that I've been working on for months now. I'm really excited about it, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that one. And if you won't do it for me, do it for the monetization gods because they've been quite displeased with me recently. Anyways guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been T2, and that's a wrap. Have a great day.